to our knees, please He sees poverty is just a trap they design We cry, knowledge is how we climb But if you don't use what you've learned, yeah, my power is mine Night school plus a couple jobs Grew all to work, barely survived Get fired or resign Information plus a little inspiration Anything it takes to recharge your power is mine Get it cracking, knowledge actions Many caught in the fractions Distractions holding your passions Now I make them attractions Kid watching the stars But you ain't reaching that tall it's like you jocking on the LeBron But never seeking the ball The tiger's eye and paw Got you feeling he fall Cause you never made a part And then the curtain was called Knowledge with no apps or talk Looking for laughs One who acts like that's a mule That's rocking books on his back Like an app when having dreams Of you achieving great things But waking to a life For you adults at 18 See patience is a virtue Cause laziness is devilish Feel it doesn't hurt you It's bathing in its settlement I never Give us somebody and say, we haven't had a good time in the world. Amen. There's no other place we need to be. Amen. I know the playoffs is going on, but God's playoff is going on right now. Amen. <laughs> this time, real quickly, we just want to acknowledge and give honorable mentioning today to Luke Ford, to Paige Hollowfield, to Nathaniel Neal, and to Wesley Sandlmaster. I want to real quickly to give on our fourth uh, Sunday during our youth um, explosion to give uh, over the top performance award and then those individuals that are doing things that are courageous those things that are selfless those things that are of excellence and uh, also those things that are pertaining to um, education and so i'm going to do that real quickly uh, right here on my would that be my right your left i believe uh is neil mike uh nathaniel neil i'm sorry michael is his brother <laughs> Nathaniel Neal is also my son. Uh, he's an uh, over-the-top achiever, uh, high grade point average. He's in the gate program. He's a, amen. He has so many uh, academic achievements. I can't can't mention them all. Amen. Part of the student council. He's an over-the-top performer. Give him a big hand. Up. Just read that real quick, Dr. Um, Andrews, real quick. This is presented to uh, Next Dimension Destiny Center, presented to. Um, yeah. There we are. Uh, presented to Nathaniel Neal for over the top performance in education. Right next to him, amen, is uh, one of our youth ministers here, amen, Brother Luke, amen, Minister Luke, who is uh, working with um, prepaid legal, and he has like a thousand people under him, I have lost count, and uh, also have his pastor, amen, and he's building a staff under me, I don't even know what's going on, he just can't tell me, you got 15 more people, you got 10 more people under me, I'm like, what, all right, so he's doing an awesome job in business, amen. Uh, an over-the-top performer. Give him a break. Really and we have Sister Paige Hallfield, amen. Uh, I knew Paige when she was knee-high to a grasshopper, amen. And now she's over there at Cal State San Bernardino, amen, the third year of criminology, amen. It's not just about accomplishing things, but the bravery and the, um, the selflessness. She was instrumental in, she has been instrumental in helping people, amen? Helping people. This church does God gestures, love gestures during the week. And uh, we had the church to do about three love gestures this week. I hope you guys did it. Amen. But today we want to honor Paige Hollifield with an over-the-top performance medal. Give her a really big hand of applause.
last but not least, uh, uh, young Wesley Sims, who's not here. He's a student body president. He's going to Arizona State, I believe he is. Uh, just has accomplished quite a bit. He has love coming out of his ears. Everybody <laughs> loves Wesley Sims. Amen. So give him a great big hand of applause. One more round of applause for all of these young people.
to do one song. Okay, we gotta do one song. And then allow the Lord to have Pastor Kenyon, this all you guys have? Because the time is of the essence. <laughs> Amen. Y'all come to hear the word of God? Amen. Y'all got some patience this morning? Amen. Y'all got patience this morning? Amen. Everybody? Oh, well, you saying you fine. Is all y'all fine? Amen. <laughs> exactly. All right. I know what the deal is. Amen. Glory to God. It's youth day. We got to work on a youth night. Amen. We all can just go and do what you're going to do. Amen. On Sunday morning, folks are ready to come to church. And everybody don't go to Destiny Center, y'all. Turn to your neighbor and say, everybody's not part of this church. <laughs> part of the kingdom, not part of this church. Amen. So they're subject to different kinds of protocols and so forth. So we get one song, amen, to the tribe of Judas. If you all come at this time, we'll take it from there. Amen. amen. <laughs> mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. I mean, if we all consider ourselves and what's going through our mind, what's going through our heart on a day-to-day -day basis, are we pleasing to God? We all wore white today because in a sense, when we give our life to Christ, we got to take off the old man and put on Christ. And a lot of times, living in this spiritual life is like we're dressed in white. Don't you have to be real careful when you're wearing white not to get nothing on you and, and not to spill anything because it's going to be easily seen. You, you watch where you sit, you watch where you walk, and you got to be careful. And when we live for Christ, we have to be careful because He's changed our garments. His blood has purified us and made us white as snow. And we can't do what we used to do. We can't just mess around with whatever because we'll get dirty and we'll it be visible. It can be seen. We're here just to, just to encourage you to know that you can be free from whatever thing that's holding you back, whatever things that is trying to pull you down. Drama Judah, it was for freedom. It was for freedom that Christ set us free. Therefore, keep standing strong and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Galatians 5.1. Hallelujah. the spirit of the Lord there is freedom if you're tired you are thirsty there is
Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jews first and also to the Greeks, for therein the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith, amen? But the Bible furthermore said, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So would you stand on your feet today as we receive uh, Pastor I'm casual. I like coming casual, but I just want to thank you guys for having us here. It was a, um, definitely an honor. And, a, and um, many times people think that because you preach or because you are called to the fivefold ministry or whatever, God's giving you anointing to preach. It doesn't mean you have anointing to live. That's right. That's and so just know that many times um, you're not defined by what you say. You're defined by what you do and how you live. And no one knows your own. You know nobody's watching. And so I have met your pastor and a couple of guys I know here go to our gym as well. And I watch everybody. And I, I don't know if they're pastors or not pastors. I have no idea. But your husband do a good job. Um, but the, the, the point is that you'll just never know. You'll never know who's watching. You'll never. But that's why integrity and character is so important. Because the word of God is your compass when nobody's around. And so just know that your, your pastor definitely has integrity. I've watched him since I met him. And um, everything I've seen is something I would do myself. And it's like Paul saying, follow me as I follow Christ, which means my lifestyle must reflect the glory of God. And therefore, it's worthy of following. And so let's just dive into the word of God. I am, um, by nature, uh, uh, I'm pointing that way, huh? Um, naturally, I'm a teacher. Um, today, I'm just a little, I'm, I'm going to teach some. Um, I'm an expositor, just in my heart. And uh, we'll just get into God's word and let's just let God uh, bless our lives. Father, I just thank you and praise you, Lord God, for your word. I thank you, Lord, that your word is the final and the only authority. I pray let your word today become to every single person a lamp unto their feet, a light unto their path. I pray let our hearts be open to receive the engrafted word of God that can change our lives. I thank you, Lord God, that your word says in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, in whom the God of this world has tried to blind the minds, the purpose of those that do not believe, lest the glorious light of your gospel will shine in them. But I thank you, Lord God, that 2 Corinthians 3, 18, that we all with open face behold as in a glass or a mirror the glory of the Lord. Lord, we're changed into that same image from glory to glory, even by the Spirit of God. And I pray right now, God, draw on our hearts, God. I pray that our hearts will receive your word with gladness. I pray that our hearts today will be like good ground, God, bringing forth 30, 60, and 100 fold return of your scripture in our lives. And we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. I love the Bible, so let's just dive right in. Turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 25. I wouldn't entitle this for title's sake, um, Battle Scars. And I thought it was amazing um, that one lady that came up earlier, um, I think it was the confession. <laughs> I, I, I really enjoyed that. Um, she, she preached that confession. And uh, that, the guy that was mining, I really, I love mining, and I really enjoyed that. And that last dance just went. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed that as well. So you guys have some amazing gifts in your house, and um, to God be the glory for that. So let us dive in. You should have received a little piece of paper when you walked in. Do you guys get that? Yeah. It's a little slip. Go ahead and pull that out for me really fast. And it says battle scars on there. Yeah. And you see the numbers 1, 2, and 3. On those little numbers, I want you to take the time right now to write. Um, so no, no one's going to see it besides you. So you, you, you can be honest. I, I want you to write the things in your life that you would consider a scar. Write down the thing in your life that you fear the most. Write down the thing in your life that has happened to you that nobody knows about and you don't want no one to know about. Write down that thing that you've been damaged by, hurt by. Write that thing down on there. It may be one, two, three, maybe more. But um, just go ahead and take the time right now to write that on there. And um, when we get done, you'll see why. And, um, but today I want to talk to you guys about battle scars. And I want to talk about leaving your mark. The theme of this conference when I received the, um, the write-up was talking about youth moving forward. But just know this, the word of God is not broken down from children's ministry, youth ministry, adults ministry. It's just the truth, and then the truth is what makes us free. So just know whether you're an adult, 3 to 50, it doesn't matter. The word of God is what changes our life. So just know the word of God is for you, but it's for whoever's in this room that has an ear to hear. Let them hear what the word of God is saying today. So on that piece of paper, I hope you wrote that stuff down. So just keep that, you know, privately to yourself, and we're going to get back to it in a moment. Genesis chapter 25, verse 21 says this. 
It says, Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was barren and the Lord answered him and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. Now, just know, before this happened, she was barren, meaning she could not have children. So now he was praying to the Lord because he wanted a child. That's the context. Now, verse 22 says this, but the children struggled together within her womb, which lets you know there were twins in the womb. So now when we look at the text, it says, and she said, if it is so, why then am I this? So she went to inquire of the Lord. Verse 23 says, and the Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb and two peoples will be separated from your body. And one people shall be stronger than the other and the older shall serve the younger. Verse 24, when her days to be delivered were fulfilled. Now watch this. There were twins in her womb. Now, I want to show you something in this next verse many people always overlook, is that number one, she was barren. She could not have the promised child yet. Once the Lord came upon her, now she conceived, and she did not receive one nation, but two nations. But now, I really want you to pay attention on this next verse. It says, verse 24, that she had two um, twins in her womb. Verse 25, now um, then the first came forth with red hair, with red all over, like a hairy garment, and they named him Esau. Verse 26, afterward his brother came forth with his hand holding on to Esau's heel, so his name was called Jacob, and, I, and Isaac was 60 years old when she gave him birth. Now watch this. The name was given to Jacob as a result of the very first decision he made upon being birthed. Now watch this. Esau came out first and they described what he looked like because he had no behavior yet. Jacob, before he even came out, reached out and grabbed the heel of Esau and they called him Jacob, which in the, um, which in the Hebrew means a heel catcher, a supplanter, or a trickster. That's right. What happens when you make one decision in your life and for the rest of your life you're, you're, you're called by and you're recognized by one decision? <laughs> Jacob's identity was given because of one decision. Now, what if my decision isn't a favorable decision and my decision is opposite the character of God, but the rest of my life, I live in view of one decision. So now, to think of the context. We have a guy named Esau who was the elder who was already prophesied he will serve the younger, but the younger before he even came out already was reaching for his placement. Before he was even born, he was trying to be first place. Now his character, his name, which a name in Hebrew means character or authority. His name was given as a result of his first action, his, uh, his beginning behavior, his authority. Now I want you to go back to Genesis for a second. I was going to quote it for you. The Bible says, let us make man after our image. After our likeness. He said, let them have what? Dominion. Yes. But now watch this. The Bible says that when God formed the animals, he formed man, formed animals and all that. But watch, woman came last. But watch what's amazing though. He formed the animals and the word brought in the Hebrew means to carry. You don't have to carry an animal if it's alive. How many of you guys are going to carry your cat around forever? You're going to look foolish. You got a big great dame carrying that big boy on your shoulder looking crazy. Why? Because he's moving his own. Then the Bible says that, look, that God brought woman to man. Now watch this. God did not tell Adam what to name the woman. Adam said, this is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. You shall be called woman. Part B, for you were taken out of man. How would I know you were taken out of me if I was asleep when you did it? That word sleep in the Hebrew does not mean sleeping like you go to sleep at night. It means like a transit state, like in a trance. And now Adam, God immobilized him so that he would have no input. But he wanted to him to see it's coming from me. Now watch this. God brought woman to Adam and then he declared her name and authority. He not only told her who she would be, he also told her her placement in society. Saying you are now equal with me. You were taken from the side of me, not below or above. You will rule with me. Therefore my name, your name, your reputation lets me know not only who you are, but what your authority should be in relationship to me. So now you have this guy named Jacob who his first decision gave him a character and an authority based on birth. How many of your children really know what they're doing at two months, six months, 
My wife's pregnant now. I'm sure Ava has no idea what she's doing. But upon birth, she comes out and makes one decision. And now we've given her a name called Jacob, which means supplanter, trickster, heel catcher. And for the rest of her life, she's labeled by a decision that she made in ignorance. Now watch this. We'll go deeper in a second. You guys with me still? Yeah. Go to Exodus chapter 33. So we see at the end of verse 26 that, that um, Jacob came out and he was grabbing the heel. And he shouldn't have been, bottom line. And now you're going to see Exodus chapter 33. You can turn over there. And the Bible says this, Exodus 33 chapter, um, verse 20 says this. And he said, you cannot see my face, for no man shall see me and live. Now, keep this in mind. This here, now, we're still in the Pentateuch, or the first five books of the Bible, so we're talking about which most Jews refer to as the law. We're still here. You cannot see my face and live. None of us have seen God face to face. So we have like Abraham who has seen God, but that doesn't mean that he's seen God like I'm seeing you right now. You have Moses who, who was hidden, have a rock. Doesn't mean he got ten commands. Doesn't mean that God was like, hey, look at my face. <laughs> when he says we see God, Scripture doesn't give us all the clarity on what that visit was like. Sometimes it's referred to as an angel. So there is no point of debating that because if it's not crystal clear, if, if it's not, then this is always my thing. If it's not essential to salvation, I'm not debating about it. There's no point. Because at the end of it, if nobody is saved alive for Christ, why am I wasting my time? Right. So when God is silent, I just stay silent. And when God speaks, I just choose to speak. Now, look at this verse. We see that no man will see God face to face and live. We know in that day, when the resurrection comes and all that, when we're all going back to glory, we will see God in the fullness of glorified bodies. We'll see God and all that great stuff is going to happen. And that's going to be a beautiful day. But check this out. He said in Exodus, no man will see God's face and live. Now, that's strange because the same guy, Jacob, the Bible says wrestled with an angel. Most theologians believe it was God. But then he says that he saw God face to face. Now, either, either we're just dumb or maybe we're just ignorant or maybe there's a contradiction in Scripture which there cannot be none or maybe there's something we haven't seen yet. Now, I, I think it's the latter. Now, let me show you something really quick. If you look over in Genesis chapter 25, I mean 35, my fault, my Genesis 35, and I'm going to come right back to that. I'm going to show you the context on why I just made that statement, and I, I believe it's going to bless you. Looking at Genesis 25, verse 10. Now, watch this. It says this. Genesis 25. Where's the there? I'm at 35. Yeah, I'm at 35. Let's go to 35, sorry. Yeah, there we go. Now, let me set this up for you. You have Jacob, who is now resting this angel all night. And then, the angel tells Jacob to let go of me. Jacob says, I will not let go of you unless you bless me. Now, this word bless... Bless me or bless in the Hebrew means a benediction. A benediction is a final word that is spoken. Now remember, this is Jacob who was born as a trickster, supplanter, heel catcher. He is saying, I don't want to live this way no more. Now, let me give you some context here. The scripture does not say who started the fight. It just says he wrestled all night. It picks up right there. I don't know who started it. All I know is that he was wrestling. And before it was over, he said, I will not let you go. Now watch this. The angel chose to wrestle with him for a little while. We don't know how long. But then when he saw he did not take over him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. That's why the Jew would not eat the, 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 the meat of the thighs. They believed it was a signal of weakness. Now watch this. Jacob, supplanter, trickster, heel catcher, is fighting this angel. The angel realizes this man doesn't get it yet. Jacob was strong, fighting his own strength, and then God said, listen, you can never have your name changed as long as you're fighting your own battle. And then 
he touches his hip bone, puts you out of joint, and then now he limps for the rest of his life. Now wait a minute. If I won the fight, why am I limping the rest of my life? It wasn't until after he got his limp that he said, man, blessed be the name of the Lord. He would not humble himself until he realized my blessing does not come on my own ability, but it comes when I surrender to God. Amen. Understand, the name did not change until after his, his thigh was touched by the angel. He was fighting all before then, and then once they turned his thigh, then he said, listen, what is your name? My name is Jacob. He, he really said, my name is Trickster, Supplanter, and Heel Catcher. And he said, from now on, this is the benediction. He said, I want, do you bless me? I'll let you go. He said, from now on, no longer will you be a trickster, supplanter, heel catcher. Your name is now Israel. You will rule as God. Now, wait a minute. That's in chapter 25. Then, it's not until two and a half chapters later that the scripture even shows that the Bible acknowledges the name change. Now, wait a minute. If you say from this day forward, I will no longer be called Jacob, but I can look at the next verse and see Jacob. Why if my name is changed, why do I still see my old name here? Just because God changes your, your name, changes your character, makes you alive in him, does not mean that people do. Amen. That again. You can be changed in a moment. God changed his name in one moment, but people don't forget who you were. Right. And therefore, it took about two more chapters for them to get on board and go back. I'm not making it up. Go back and read it. That's right. Two chapters later, his name is now Israel. So the scripture isn't incorrect. It's just letting you know it takes time. Right. Salvation is right now. Sanctification is a process. And so now this limp, this scar he has for the rest of his life is a result of a victory that he believed he had. When you fight in your own strength, you will never experience your limp. From Popo, throwing OGs with Fofos To a hobo who died so I don't see him no more To the homie I know spinning his dome like yo-yo You gotta wake up without coffee and no dose And Lord knows he be in control of all realities Extorted families, casually reported casualties You know my supernova that exploded through our galaxy A man at ease breathing tragedy with massive cavalry Spare my sanity, a message to humanity Death is real but satanic plans can hand you fantasies No, this world is simply made with only men Metaphors, truth that lies beyond is the afterlife we headed for. Better for the sacrifice, heaven's quoted at that price. Death destroys pleasures, but we sleeping on a half the night. If you read divine poems, you pray much. Graves rough, ox smell the black roses. Wake up. In this false reality, isn't really clear to me how it's all supposed to go down. Wake up every morning, does not been ignoring? It's been rounds and rounds. Way more society, lost my own priorities. Knowing I should hold my ground.